today on the TMZ Podcast. Welcome to the TMZ Podcast. Harvey Levin here. And Jason. So we're going to talk about two things today. I want to talk about Balenciaga, and I want to talk about, I'm not sure whether the headline is Donald Trump or Kanye West, but we're going to talk about that. Okay. So let's start with Balenciaga. So look, um, they screwed up, and they um, they had a photographer who basically put a teddy bear in a bondage outfit. That's wrong. Yep. They shouldn't do that. Okay, I get it. So it created all this outrage, and the question is Kim Kardashian. She was silent about this for days and has finally spoken out and said that she thought it was terrible. She is reevaluating her um, association with the company and wants to make sure there's a measure of accountability before she makes a final decision. I like him a lot. I yeah. think she's incredibly... Um, Savvy, it feels so political to me. It feels so political. A, what do you mean by political? Because it, it, it's sort of like taking the temperature. I, I get see. it. I see. Look, if she wanted, if she's really outraged by it, say it when it happens. I mean, why the wait? I mean, is it is it <clears throat> kind of taking the temperature or what? I think it's important to, to give a little more color to the teddy bears in the bondage <clears throat> outfit. They were also in the campaign were being held by little girls. They yeah. look like seven or eight years old. Mm -hmm. They were teddy bears that, again, being held by these little girls in bondage outfits as part of some sort of campaign. Balenciaga is an artistic brand. It does <clears throat> we wacky things that might not make sense to the you's and me's of the world, but other people in the fashion industry really admire them. This did go too far. Does it surprise you that Kim is taking the temperature, sort of putting her finger to the wind and seeing how it goes? Th that is who she is, right? Everything is based on the temperature. Are you expecting more? No, you know, I, I admire I, her like you do, but I, I wonder if... I, I don't think that's true. I think okay. when she um, when she decided to champion, you know, Alice and get her out of prison, yep. that was her taking a stand on something that wasn't necessarily sure. front and center, and she put it front and center, sure. even though others were working on it. So she's certainly capable and even eager sometimes to do that. And look, I don't want to make a, too big a deal of this, the bigger deal I want to make is what is going on in this country hmm. that every time somebody screws up, it's not about let's make them understand why it was wrong and do better. Let's cancel them. Let's boycott them. And that's what's going on with Balenciaga right now. And it's sort of like this moral outrage that I think has emanated from Twitter over the last five years. It's like... This has happened. Do you remember? In I think it was 2007 when L'Oreal did a, uh, a an ad with Beyonce, and it, it, there was some controversy, but it looked like they lightened her skin. Yes, and you know that was wrong. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember people saying let's boycott L'Oreal. I you know I I think you know they haven't done it again, and they learned from it, and it was wrong, um, and. And, and, you know, it, it seems like the default now is automatically to say, kill them, boycott right. them, cancel them. And it's like, dude, I get it. It's a teddy bear in bondage, and they shouldn't have done it. And the photographer said, I screwed up. Balenciaga should have looked at it better. I guarantee you they're having internal meetings today about this. Yep. And I doubt they're going to do that again. But why is it always from zero to 100 and not somewhere in the middle? Yeah, I, I mean, you, you and I are in accord on this. We always have been about cancel culture and how it goes too far. And certainly there well, are some people. what about this case? Who, but this case seems to be, this seems preposterous, right? Preposterous. You have, you have a company that hired a photographer. They did something wrong. They put it out there. Immediately upon being informed of what they did and the backlash, they came out and issued a full-throated apology and took the ad, you know, never ran it, and and they feel legitimately bad. Now, part of that is the reaction to it has caused them to feel bad about it, but they are an artistic brand. They're always going to push the envelope. Right. And I think you want to encourage that, and you also want to encourage when people realize they've screwed up, that they apologize, which they did, but... Uh, I'm hearing but, but, you. But, but uh, Jason, yeah. I don't want to pass over okay, that point. Fair yeah. That's a re what you just said is so important that creativity 
sometimes by definition pushes people over the line. Yes. And they got to learn where that line is. And the only way to learn, honestly, is trial and error. Yeah. That they probably did have meetings on this and they were misguided and somebody said, oh, this is going to be good. And it's pushing that envelope. If we want to be vanilla, then let's just tell everybody you misstep, you get canceled, and then you'll be vanilla and everybody will be between those very narrow lines. But I think you're right that if you're going to be creative the way comedians are, right. the way artists are, sometimes that line gets crossed. Right, and it's a really important I, – I, I, this is such an important distinction between – People who have been canceled for committing crimes or doing awful things or saying anti-Semitic or racist things, those things are in a different – because those people th – that's a thought-through thing on behalf of an individual where they got pushed back and set, sort of said, oh, well, if I offended anybody, I'm, a, I I'm sorry. That's very different than a company doing a mea culpa on something like this. I, I agree completely, although I do wonder – so therefore, if we tie Kim back into this, are, are, are you suggesting that Kim – Shouldn't well, I'll tell you what I, I wish I thought I, you were going in a different direction because I thought you were criticizing Kim for <coughs> not just coming out I'm, and canceling I, I, Balenciaga. I, I, no, no, no. I'm making two points. Okay. One is about Val Balenciaga that I think they should have just said, "Hey, you know, we made a mistake. We'll do better." Um, I think you know. Look, Kim is the signature for Balenciaga yes. in many ways, and I just think she should have said something earlier. And it felt too calculating. And honestly, what I would have loved Kim to say, rather than I want to, I, I, I want to browbeat yeah. them in, into accountability, I would have rather had her say, "Look, they screwed up royally. This was bad. It's not the company I know. Um, if they do it again and they haven't learned from this, then we got a problem." But they got to learn from this. Yeah. And leave it at that. So, so she she had an interesting statement. And I think there's part of this that I really take umbrage with. She said, I'm currently reevaluating my relationship That's my with problem. the brand. Yeah. Based, it, basing it off their willingness to accept accountability. Okay. She then says... For something that should never have happened to begin with. That's where that's where I think she runs uh, into a problem because, again, as we were saying, when you are pushing the envelope as Balenciaga does, this is not— Kim's the, pushed this, the envelope. She certainly has. This is not the gap. But I'm not talking about it because of Kanye. It's not a milk toast brand. It is a brand that, and Kim is another one, that pushes the envelope consistently with nudity, with different types of clothing. And that, by the way, yeah. and, and, and that's not being critical of Kim. Not at all. I think Kim is a, is, is, is she is. I lo what I love the, is Kim has become, you know, over the years, artistic. And I think that's awesome. She's the number one influencer in the world. Yeah, and it's, and it's fabulous. And you know yes. what? Sometimes she screws up too. And, you know, look, this is not murder. It's not murder. Right. Right. It's a damned it's a teddy bear. Art, it's right. a bad attempt at art. Yeah. And uh, that's that's it. We got to move on to Kanye because this is, I got to tell you, Jason, I don't even know what to say. I th What's interesting, let me, this is somebody, I'll, I'll, I'll let you talk about it. This is somebody who attempts to cast as art things that are actually really awful. He's, so, so is he really casting art? Oh, anymore? I think I think he thinks himself as an artistic genius, and the rest of the world just doesn't get how brilliant he is, right? I, I, well, no, he's always said that. Yeah, but he is just now a straight up anti semite, yeah. um, uh, bigot. Yeah, and uh, the idea, and and by the way, this we should I I think we should probably be talking about Donald Trump more than we should Kanye West. We know who Kanye is now, yeah, but the idea. That that Kanye West would bring Nick Fuentes, who is the you know the, the poster child for this white nationalism, to bring them to 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 La, to Mar-a-Lago um, over Thanksgiving mm -hmm. for dinner with Donald Trump, and for Donald Trump to say I didn't know who he was, bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah. He has secret service, number one. I mean, you can't just say, hey, I'm bringing a buddy along to have dinner with a former president. These guys get vetted. They get checked. Of course. They do background. But beyond that, he, is, he was there on January 6th at the Capitol. He is famous. Donald Trump swims in that pool of, you know, media. Christian where white nationalists. Well, yes. where this guy well, yes. is profiled. Right. And for him to say... I didn't know who he was, and you're sitting at dinner with him, and you still don't know who he is? 
and you know, and and I started thinking about it. I'm sorry for going on and on, but even if Nick Fuentes wasn't at that dinner, Kanye West was on the heels of all of these anti-Semitic remarks, and Donald Trump's having dinner with him. Yeah, what is that saying? Well, Donald Trump, we we know, will entertain anybody. Who likes Donald Trump? Who Absolutely. Says positive things about Donald Trump. Absolutely. And it obviously backfired. I mean, and the reason Trump came out so so against Kanye and Nick Fuentes apparently has to do with <coughs> Kanye asking Trump if Trump would be would... Kanye's running mate. All this. I, I get it. Banana stuff. Then explain to me why was he invited I, to dinner in the first I, place? I can't explain that. And but I, isn't that the point? That that is the point. There are two points. Number one, why would he invite Kanye? Well, we know because Kanye has flattered him in the past. He'll have dinner with anybody who flatters him. And On the heels there, of anti-Semitic remarks, there are very few people that will flatter Donald Trump anymore. And so he found one. But I agree with you also that before Kanye West would have told. The Secret Service, who it is that was he was going to bring to dinner, they would have vetted him. They told Donald of Trump course. who he was. By the way, just just so we're clear about Nick Fuentes, he's not just a Christian right nationalist who believes that America should be run as a Christian country. He's also said some things about women that I think we need to know about. Oh, yeah. His comments that women lack the capacity to fully uh, participate in a democracy. They should not be allowed to vote. And as compared the treatment of women by the Taliban, fa- he, he said he treated that favorably. He's suggested he, that- He, he that is a fan of the Taliban. He is a fan of the Taliban, has come out and said the Taliban are anti-gay, anti-woman, a- women, and, and, uh, and anti-vaccine. What have we been do- Why have we been opposed to them for the last 20 years? Right. This is a hate monger. He's a hate monger. That was invited to the White House, was entertained at the White House, with uh, broke bread with the former president of the United States. And, who, had, and had, had, had a dinner with him. Had a so dinner with him. So this is not, hi, how are you? This is sitting down for dinner. And for Donald Trump to come out afterwards and excoriate Kanye West, say all these bad things about Kanye West, and, and deny knowing who Nick Fuentes is, <clears throat> that's just because the dinner didn't go as Donald Trump wanted it to go. Had they... Prayed homage, uh, uh, you know, homage to him. Had they kissed his ring, he would have come out with some sort of other way of casting this dinner. So why aren't more Republicans vocal about this? Some are. Asa Hutchinson is. Others are. But where's Kevin McCarthy in this? And it's like I, I, I understand the, you know, the, the, the politics of him getting 218 votes to become speaker. I get it. And all of that. But this is going to bite him in the ass eventually because it's clear what road Donald Trump is going down. And at a point, it just seems to me that this is the long game. It ain't good for him. Uh, I, I I can't agree with you more about the long game. The short game, though, is is the 218 votes, right? He, in order for Kevin McCarthy to become the speaker, he needs the vote of the 22 or whatever it is far right wing Christian nationalists in the House of Representatives. But but wait a minute. But if if they get divided, yeah, what happens? Because I've been thinking about this. So suppose they say no. You know, you got, you condemn Donald Trump, Kevin McCarthy. Uh, we're not going to vote. Well, then what's going to happen? Who are they going to settle on? I mean, who's going to get that? Well, they, they, there are certain centrist members of the House that will, you know, like who? Every, but that that will join with Democrats to get a. I think Kevin McCarthy wins either way. Yeah, but but the, I think that's the point. But the maybe, but he doesn't want. Then the party is divided, though, right? Then then you have the party is so divided right now. Yes, I mean there are. Look, you talk to people in Washington. Most people hate Donald Trump. Right in that party, and they always have for and, the last five years, and they, they always, always have. have. Yeah. So at a point, you know, especially now when he's just pulled out all the stops. Yeah. Isn't this the time? It, maybe it is, but they're still terrified. If you look at polling, Donald Trump is still running a little bit better, at le- at worst even, with Ron DeSantis. He still has a stranglehold on 45% of that party that is not going anywhere. And they fear that if they come out against him, who knows what happens to that 45%. That 45%, by the way, are... Kind of bananas, right? They're not going to just like, well, I'll fall in the line behind the, behind the Republicans because I'm afraid of the Democrats. They'll start their own party. They'll go rogue. And I think they're terrified of that. The Democrats have been terrified of that forever. And that's why they <coughs> haven't come out and spoken against their more extreme wing. And the Republicans are facing that now. You know, I've, I've got this feeling that you, you look at somebody like Adam Kinzinger, who did take a stand yeah. and isn't running again. Uh, but I think Adam Kinzinger... Based on what I know, he has a political future in Illinois. 
And yeah. I think he is, I, and I, I don't know this, but I believe that this guy's going to run for governor. And I, I, and, and I think he could win because yeah. of the stand he took. And if that happens, does that not acquit people in that party for taking a stand on such fundamental issues? I, I, yes, it does. And Adam Kinzinger, had he run, would have been primaried and would have lost in the Republican Party. Right. He wouldn't have gotten the nomination. As we saw so many other centrist, anti-Trump <clears throat> Republicans lose in the primaries. Right. By stepping out, by stepping aside and giving up his seat to somebody else, he has saved his, his himself for another day. And I think you're right. He could run for another office. He could run, for, frankly, for the office he just lost. I think Democrats would vote for him. I think Democrats would vote for him, too, as Liz Cheney. I mean, in a state like Wyoming where there's only yeah, one House happen. seat, yeah. she's not going to get that. But she could, like her father did before her, move to another state that's more accepting of her. She is a hero of the left, even though... If you look at her policies, the Democrats are not very fond of her. But nevertheless, she's it, hardline she's a, conservative. Yeah, and so is Adam Kinzinger is pretty conservative. Is pretty as well. conservative yeah. as well. But you know, I, you know, I, I just my hope, and let's just end on this: is this election was really surprising to a lot of people. Honestly, it was really surprising to me. You and I included. I yes. was wrong. I thought the economy was going to tank the Democrats. Because it's bad right now. I mean, yep. people Inflation are feeling tough. it. Yeah. The idea that they felt stronger about democracy than they did about their wallets is unbelievable to me. It's unbelievable to me. And I think abortion played into it, too. But I do think there was an element of democracy in this that should that is kind of rearing its head that people should glom onto. And I just think maybe over the next two years... It's going to catch fire because we're in such a perilous state right now that maybe people are finally starting to see the light because it's been so dark for so long. I couldn't agree more. Nothing to add to that. See you tomorrow.